Hi everybody and welcome to the flute practice. We are on day 14 of this flute bootcamp series and today we are engaging in some dynamic practice. We're going to be practicing dynamics. So let's go check it out. We're going to use today again this Della Sonorite exercise that we used uh, last week as well. But today we're using it specifically for dynamics. This exercise I really love because I do find it is so versatile. There's so many things we can use it for. Next week we're going to use it again for something totally different. The first dynamic practice we need to do is diminuendos. They are so common in flute music and they really need to be trained. Now just a few basic pointers for those of you who don't know or those of you who need reminding. When we do diminuendos the pitch on the flute automatically wants to go flat. We are slowing down that airspeed and as a result the pitch will naturally do this if I do nothing. It will go down. It's quite hard to actually not do anything in diminuendos. So what I want you to think about when you are doing diminuendos, we're going to think about bringing those lips forward. We are slowly going to be in decreasing the size of the tone hole and we are going to be reducing the airspeed slowly and lifting, letting the chin especially come forward and letting that airstream lift to raise the pitch. So let's try it. The other thing you want to do is actually increase the support. Once again, not blow harder, but increase the support. There's a very, very big difference. You're just going to feel a little bit more kind of, not holding, but a little bit more kind of like just keeping it there in your lower abdomen area. And that is what we talk about when we say increasing that support. I've spoken to some, it's also not pushing out. That's not it. It's just about kind of letting it stay out there and just kind of supporting that area a little bit more. So keep practicing this and see if you can really get them consistently just getting that sound down, down, down and see how long, especially towards the end of that note, how long you can really hold that. I got a little bit of a whistle tone at the end there, whistle at the end, which is one of the reasons we did practice whistle tones two days ago was to find this control, which is going to help you hugely with your diminuendos. Now the exercise that's going to be great for practicing your dynamics is the note bending exercise we have done. Um, I think we're getting to it a little bit later in the series. I'll have to go check my list. But this note bending exercise also great for this embouchure flexibility which will help you a lot. A lot of the principles of that are what we actually need. So this is really about coming forward. It's like you're bending the note up, coming forward, closing, lifting that airstream. Okay, practice your things. You can carry on with the exercise. So going down, also do high notes which is really great. So much more difficult, uh, especially on the high note. I could probably show you that that pitch drop easier. If I do nothing, if I don't come forward with that jaw and forward with the lips and up with the airstream. If you're finding the notes are cracking, it's usually there is not enough support. You are dropping that support too early. The support really should go past the note when you're finished playing. And especially for diminuendos, you're going to feel that the support is going to need to get more. It's going to become more intense. So if you're cracking, it's usually a support problem. All right. Now, when you get the hang of those nice diminuendos, I want you to spend some time with your crescendos. Okay. These in many ways are not more difficult, but we don't practice them a lot. We, we spend more time on the diminuendos. You know, we like, okay, I know I must practice those because those are tricky, but we don't often spend time really on those crescendos, making sure we're not going sharp, making sure we're getting that increase in sound quite consistent over a period of time. So and even there, I started too strong, too fast. And um, I think I even got a bit sharp. I'll have to listen back to that. But I think I got a little bit sharp there. So I'm going to try that again. Now, this is really the opposite. We're opening, we're dropping the jaw. We're opening the lips to allow a, a bigger aperture here. We are 
actually just blowing a little bit more air at a faster speed. We're just really going for it, but we're still finding absolute focus in the sound. So this is not about just oh, opening up. This is still about absolute focus. It's really about increasing that air speed a little bit, but not necessarily by like just blowing out all your air. And this is very important. Um, we can increase the air speed by supporting more and, and without just blowing out more air. Try wrap your head around that. I think the way that I like to think about it is if you're blowing onto your hand. So if you're going to blow onto your hand, you can blow all your air really fast and quickly, or you can focus the air and you can really control from your support. So you're still getting faster. If anything, you're probably getting faster air, but you are not necessarily just blowing out all your air. So this, I think, play with this, this feeling of just blowing out all your air with no support and like a balloon slowly releasing that air and controlling that air. So Dominio, let's try this crescendo again. I'm going to try a little bit of a better crescendo. And really, once again, test it, push it, push it to the point where you feel, oh, it's going to start cracking or it's going to start kind of um, overblowing. Push, push your, push your boundaries with this dynamic practice, guys. Do as much pushing as you can because this is the time to do it, not in the concert, in your pieces or even like in your pieces when you're playing them. Then you want to have kind of gathered all your colors on your palette to do whatever it is you want to do with your pieces. But now push the skill. You can now spend some time doing combinations of stuff. So doing a diminuendo to a crescendo and then a diminuendo again, other way around crescendo, diminuendo, crescendo again. Once again, I'm just going to refer you guys to that lovely um, Bernoulli book that I oh, just, it's so great. I spent, spending time with this book was really one of the single best things I've ever done in my life in terms of my dynamic playing and my control here. It is really cool. And he does some nice challenging stuff. So really like, I, a lot, a lot of the stuff, it's expensive. I've got like a list of books that I want to buy now. Um, also through this series, a lot of you have given me really cool suggestions for new books and ideas. And I'm like, ah, I want to buy all these books. So I know these things get really expensive, but I think this book is really on your list because it's, I just, I love it. I personally just love it. All right, everyone, until tomorrow, happy practicing, happy dynamic practicing, and see you then.